Today we're looking at the Rai XT4. We're gonna do a long-term review and then I'm gonna show you how I have it set up for motovlogging. So let's go. hate to be like biased or hate sounding biased but this helmet has literally been a dream if say a month later you're wearing this helmet and then it's creating a bit of a maybe pressure point around your jaw you can actually tear off sections of the foam that's inside the cheek pads and to get it to fit you better. And it just seems like Arai kind of thought about everything with regards to fitment. Being able to do subtle customizations to the helmet without having to, you know, purchase an entirely new liner. That's gonna save you a lot of dough. The longest I've taken a ride with this helmet has been about two and a half, uh, two and a half hours of non-stop wearing. I've actually been caught in a downpour last month and it just happened out of nowhere. I was literally heading home from my friend's house and as soon as I left his house, turned onto the main street, <clears throat> it just started pouring. <laughs> I was soaked. Every part of me except for my head. And the great thing about that experience was that my vision was not obstructed. I was very, very surprised. After the downpour, I thought, man, I'm gonna have to hurry home, rip out the, rip out the liner, and hang it to dry or something. But because this helmet has so many vents, Arai also thought of facilitating the opening and closing of the vents by the rider. Even with gloves, you can easily find them and open and close them. We have two up at the top, got exhaust vents around the back. They have a closed position, a middle position, and a wide open position. The two top vents are just straight up open and closed. There are also two more vents on the visor itself. I was on the fence about this helmet and the showy Hornet. That's another one that this helmet gets compared to um, because of features and the style. They're both adventure helmets. That shit makes me nervous. One thing to note, riding with the visor on, when you hit 60 miles an hour or highway speeds, it can get pretty noisy, especially if it's already windy. But if you're gonna complain about that, then you can absolutely remove the visor and just not even deal with any of that noise. Found it. It's like a micro version of Hold your feel and what it used to look like. Anyone racing in there? No one's using it. So the velodrome is at 87th and Buffalo Avenue on the southeast side. What? Yeah, I don't think they're using it anymore. What the heck happened? Yeah, everything looks overgrown. Okay, I guess I can't pull over there.
So as far as vision with this helmet, I mean, I can see almost a full 180 degrees if my eyes were capable of doing such a thing. When you wear glasses, you, you're still able to see clearly. If you wear sunglasses, same thing. There's no obstruction whatsoever. I haven't tried this helmet with goggles, which goggles can be a little obstructive as far as blocking out part of your peripheral vision. That's not good. I know there's oil leaking from there. Shoot. I don't like this. Oh shit, am I forgetting anything? No. Right now, I wish I didn't have the visor on. So why don't we head back indoors and let's have a look at the internals and then we'll show you how I have the helmet set up with the microphone installed in it. Alright, so we're back inside. Let's remove the visor from the helmet. I've got my retaining plates. Whoops. And I've got a coin to remove the screws from the helmet. Alright, so we've got the visor off. And now we use the replacement plates and we just attach those to their appropriate side. They are marked with an R and an L. One thing to note, this whole process isn't very easy uh, because you do have to put these little retaining plastic things back on here um, they look kind of brittle and they're kind of a pain in the ass you need to plan ahead and determine what's going to be the easiest for you if it's going to be easier riding with the visor on or if it's going to be better with it off okay so once you have the little retaining plastic pieces on there that's what that looks like your screws aren't going to come off and with our fingers we're just going to start the threading and that was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. Do the other side, same routine. I like to start the top screw first to get the threading on there, and then I do the bottom. You don't want to force these screws because they are plastic. And what I do is just gently, a little bit less than finger tight, and then I roll back maybe an eighth or a quarter of a turn. All right, so this is what it looks like without the visor. That being said, if you're considering this helmet, I would highly encourage you to visit your local motorcycle supply store and uh, check this out in person, see if they have it in stock, and then try it on. That's going to be the best way for you to know if this helmet is going to fit you correctly. Alright guys, so moving on, uh, let me just show you how I have this set up for vlogging. Um, basically, I have a tripod mount for an action camera. And I have that mounted on the chin of my helmet. <clears throat> what I did was I just took some 3M tape, put it on the underside, and then stuck it just underneath my vent on the chin. And I found that that works a lot better than having one of the bigger mounts that GoPro includes. I also have a little safety cord attached to the GoPro. There's a little loop at the end of this, and in case this comes off, I still have my GoPro in place. As far as the microphone, I use my iPhone headphones. I have the microphone wrapped with some fabric so that it reduces the wind that hits it so it kind of picks up my voice a little better and doesn't sound as crappy. So I just have that stuck on the inside right in front of my mouth. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for me. If you found this video helpful or informative, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit that button below. And until next time, keep riding.